Hi, my name is Troy Parfit, and I'm the author of The Devil and His Due, How Jordan Peterson Plagiarizes Adolf Hitler. In this video, I'm going to provide you with examples of Jordan Peterson plagiarizing Adolf Hitler and explain what he's saying through his plagiarized speech, which doubles as crypto-fascism. You will see and hear only a smattering of examples, although I'll drip out more in subsequent videos. In my book, I offer more than 3,100 examples of Peterson copying from Hitler, plus another thousand or so of him filching from others, especially Friedrich Nietzsche, Carl Jung, and the necromancer Aleister Crowley. And no, this is not in any way a joke. To the charge made by Peterson's followers that I've taken his language out of context, my awareness of Peterson's rampant academic theft supplies me with plenty of context. And to help supply you with context, in videos like Jordan Peterson Praising Hitler Part 1 and Lunchtime with Jordan Peterson, I show how Peterson has heaped praise on Hitler while coming to the dictator's defense. Peterson has defended and praised other Nazis, an infamous neo-Nazi, and associates with white supremacists and ethno-nationalists. He routinely lectures on Hitler and has read Mein Kampf and Nazi propaganda pamphlets. He has repeatedly quoted Hitler in class and tells his followers they should read Hitler's Table Talk, Eichmann in Jerusalem by Hannah Arendt, and Ordinary Men by Christopher Browning, books that were written during the Holocaust or are about the Holocaust. Peterson claims his first book, Maps of Meaning, is largely about the Holocaust, and has admitted that his second book, Twelve Rules for Life, is essentially a Maps of Meaning rewrite, implying that it too has to do with the Holocaust, rather strange for a self-help book that barely mentions the Holocaust. A couple of things before we start the analysis. Peterson and Hitler can be wordy, so when you see an ellipsis, it indicates that I've cut two or three unnecessary words while remaining faithful to the original meaning. As for sources, they're in the devil and his due. Feel free to pause the video and read the examples quietly to yourself. Finally, have patience. In this case, recognizing plagiarism involves comprehending a wider pattern, hence my book. Let's begin. Hitler. Cultural products, which had evolved through thousands of years, would disappear. Peterson. Products of culture, which evolved in the social environment, characteristic of Homo sapiens, and later disappeared. Here we have too many distinctive markers for the overlap to be happenstance. A.H. says cultural products which had been evolved would disappear, and J.P. says products of culture which evolved later disappeared. Carrying on with the theme of that which evolves, Peterson, evolution is a never-ending series of linear improvements. The still powerful Victorian idea of evolutionary progress, with man at the pinnacle. Hitler, the pinnacle reached by an evolution towards gradual racial improvement. Here, we see Peterson plagiarizing Hitler's statement twice. Peterson's linear improvement is like Hitler's racial improvement, because linear implies singularity, and Hitler is talking about a single type of racial improvement, the purity of the Aryans. Peterson frequently copies Hitler on the subject of race. For instance, as a stand-in for ethnicities or members of an ethnic group, Hitler uses the word elements. He speaks of the German element, the Slav element, the Jewish element, etc. Hitler, the best elements of its racial stock. Peterson, the best elements of that culture. So here, the best elements are the best people, the ones with the most desirable racial characteristics. Hitler, primordial racial elements. Peterson, Two antithetical primordial elements. Peterson's antithetical elements are white people and non-white people. Again, he's a crypto-fascist attempting to communicate a latent ideology, mostly via plagiarized speech. Hitler, we recognize the race as the fundamental element on which all life is based. Peterson, the most fundamental elements of human life. Hitler, the constituent elements belonging to the same blood. Peterson, the constituent elements of your being. Peterson's being, capitalized, means white society or your home country. He says he got it from Martin Heidegger, who was a committed Nazi, but he probably got it from Hitler's national being, also capitalized. The constituent elements of your being means the racial elements or ethnicities in your white society or home country, or again, it means whites and non-whites. This helps explain why Peterson's worldview is so Western-centric. He has much to say about society in Sweden, Norway, and Denmark, but almost never talks about, say, Japan or South Korea. Hitler, introduction of a foreign element into our lives. Peterson, introduce a foreign element into your house. To provide context, Hitler's foreign element is what he called 
the Jew, and the Jew Hitler hated most was Karl Marx. Peterson made his foreign element remark while lecturing about a Nazi propaganda film called The Eternal Jew. When Peterson discusses Hitler, he tends to orally plagiarize Hitler. Also, you might have heard Peterson slamming liberals and the reprehensible Marxist element. This is what Hitler referred to as the communist elements. Have you ever noticed that Peterson overuses the word struggle? He does this because Mein Kampf means my struggle. The word struggle is an alt-right signal. Hitler. I was a member of the German Wehrmacht, a frontline soldier among millions of others, and that gave me my faith. My dogged struggle. Peterson. Someone like Hitler, at least this is the way I look at it, he was sort of on the front lines of the authoritarian struggle. 1. Peterson is praising Hitler while teaching at Harvard. 2. He says Hitler was on the front lines of the authoritarian struggle, whereas Hitler describes himself as a frontline soldier before reminding his listeners of his dogged struggle. Hitler, race and will in the struggle for power. Peterson, willingness to end the struggle for power. Hitler, this struggle will end in victory. Peterson, struggle with an eventual victory. Hitler, great ideological struggle. Peterson, great ideological struggle. Before I discovered Peterson was plagiarizing Mein Kampf, I thought his speech sounded old-fashioned, stilted, and mechanical. A great ideological struggle. In the 21st century, why would someone employ such an outmoded way of speaking? Hitler, the difficult struggle for the survival of our Vogue. Peterson, it's a struggle for survival and reproduction. Hitler, nature preserves the strength of the race and the species. Peterson, clearly defines the nature and race of a species. Hitler, the nature of an eternal retribution. Peterson, the nature of the eternal relationship. Hitler, I considered this fact as a natural development. Peterson, I thought this was just a natural development. Hitler, the formidable forces of nature. Peterson, the terrible forces of nature. Hitler, by leaving the process of procreation unchecked, nature selects the best. Peterson, from a Darwinian perspective, nature is what selects. Hitler, the process of natural selection, the breeding of the fittest. Peterson, nature selects. The idea of selects contains within it the idea of fitness. Hitler is talking about eugenics, which hinges on the idea of fitness. You see, the fit, or the Aryan Übermenschen, would be naturally selected to live, whereas the unfit, or Untermenschen, would be naturally selected to die. What is Peterson talking about? And why would he go on about natural selection in a self-help book meant to improve the lives of young men? Hitler typically engaged in eugenic speak by discussing nature, biology, and trees. He used trees, branches, leaves, roots, fruits, etc. as metaphors for ethnic groups. During the late 19th century and first half of the 20th century, this was distressingly common, especially in North America. Here's a famous image from the eugenics movement. You can see it says, eugenics is the self-direction of human evolution. Like a tree, eugenics draws its materials from many sources and organizes them into an enharmonious entity. Far from being harmonious, eugenics was quackery that allowed for abductions, forced sterilizations, the murder of the unfit, and was readily adopted by the Third Reich. Peterson knows this because he has spoken about it when lecturing at the University of Toronto. Peterson, and then the Nazis began their campaign of forced euthanasia, and the rationale for that was compassion, by the way, just so you all know, it's merciful to put these people who are burdensome to themselves and their families and the state who are living second-rate lives, it's merciful to euthanize them. Even here, Peterson was likely channeling Hitler, who wrote, incurably sick persons should be granted a mercy death. The tree in the eugenics image looks like an elm, or maybe an oak. And here's a 1933 poster of Hitler watering an oak. It's called German acorns. The oak was a symbol of the Third Reich. During the 1936 Olympics, gold medal winners received what was known as a Hitler oak. Jesse Owens won four golds, and therefore four Hitler oaks. He must have been ecstatic. At the good old U of T, Canada's foremost university, Peterson has shown and commented on this PowerPoint slide featuring five Nazi propaganda posters. The one in the top left corner is a cropped version of a poster called Es liebe Deutschland, or Long Live Germany, which looks like this. Note how the image of heroic Hitler is surrounded by oak leaves. Hitler once said, Is the German oak ever destined to see another springtime? 
Hitler believed that the German tree had been contaminated by the Jewish tree. Hitler, unfortunately the disease, he means of Jewishness, slowly spread to all branches of public life. Many of our German simpletons perch on these branches, which the Jews have limed to capture them. Peterson, but something new and radical, he means the so-called radical left, who he says have been contaminated by Karl Marx, is still almost always wrong. You need good, even great reasons to ignore or defy general public opinion. He's urging his followers to rebel against the radical leftists and their stifling democracy. That's your culture. It's a mighty oak. You perch on one of its branches. Ah, the German simpletons, who were okay with what Hitler called Jew-ridden universities, perch on these branches. And Peterson's fans, 30% of whom, according to Peterson, are, quote, rough working class guys, end quote, perch on one of the branches of the mighty oak. Just to be clear, when Peterson says, you need good, even great, reasons to ignore or defy general public opinion, he's encouraging people to wreak havoc and break the law. One of his aims is to turn society on its head. Only the demographic that he's trying to reach seems to have no idea what he's actually saying, because they don't understand that he's a crypto-fascist. Hitler, fixing their attention on the trees and failing to see the forest. Peterson, the leaf, when perceived, might blind the observer to the tree. The tree can blind him to the forest. As much as Peterson's fans would like to, they do backflips to defend their leader. They can't explain this example away by saying Peterson is employing a common phrase, because he isn't. The common phrase is, can't see the forest for the trees. However, that isn't to say you can't plagiarize a common phrase, because you can plagiarize anything. Again, Peterson is speaking in metaphor. The leaf, the tree, and the forest represent foreign elements. The leaf is a single foreign element, the tree a community of foreign elements in your being or home country. And the forest represents the foreign elements abroad who may immigrate to your being and spread disease or racial contamination to all branches of your mighty oak. Hitler, parliamentary corruption came together in the hope that they would cut the German resistance off at the root. Peterson, we fail to notice that things are changing or that corruption is taking root. By things changing, he means that the racial composition of countries like Canada are changing. The corruption taking root is racial corruption, because when Hitler spoke of corruption, he meant racial corruption, or what he called negrification, or bastardization. Hitler said that the parliament was corrupt because he wanted his followers to believe the Weimar Republic was being run by a cabal of scheming Jews. Hitler, bourgeois pride and stupidity are fruits of the same tree. Peterson, the fruits of the tree. Hitler, the Social Democratic Party's purpose was to see it that our movement should not grow, but should be immediately hewn down, root and branch. Peterson, citing the Bible, Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Think about how Hitler cut down the Jewish tree and cast it into the fire. Hitler often paraphrased and cited the Bible. So does Peterson. In fact, more than 100 of Peterson's biblical citations are similar to, or the same as, Hitler's. Hitler, by your fruits shall ye too be known. He's paraphrasing Matthew. Peterson, along with all manner of fruit-bearing trees, two of which were marked out. He's paraphrasing Revelation. Hitler, I now realize that the Jews were the leaders of social democracy. In the face of that revelation, the scales fell from my eyes. Peterson, the scales fell from his eyes. He became self-conscious, and he developed the knowledge of good and evil. Note that Hitler often called the Jews evil. The good are the white people, the evil the non-white people. Hitler, seeing a camel pass through the eye of a needle. Peterson, for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Hitler, to play traitor like Judas for 30 pieces of silver and betray whatever secrets they can discover. He's talking about the traitorous Jews. Peterson, then Judas, who had betrayed him and brought again the 30 pieces of silver. So, if we were to read, say, two 400-page books by Friedrich Nietzsche, and two 400-page books by Carl Jung, we might find one or two or even a handful of similar biblical references, maybe, but we certainly wouldn't find more than 100. Most likely, we wouldn't find any. Moreover, like Adolf Hitler, Jordan Peterson is not really a Christian, although he does a public biblical lecture series wherein he discusses Christian stories and themes sometimes touched on by Hitler. I document this in my book. He's been mocking and criticizing Christianity for decades, he pretends to be Christian partly to enlist converts to his cause. And why not? It worked for Hitler. 
Let's return to the PowerPoint slide with the Nazi propaganda posters. In the top right corner, we see Hitler as a knight in shining armor. Peterson really likes this poster and shows it often. Here he is showing it at a TEDx talk. It's called the Standard Bearer. This is how Peterson manically described the Standard Bearer as he displayed this slide. Look at the imagery, you know. He's the knight. He's the knight of nationalism. Well, that's God the Father too, you know. He just said Hitler is God the Father. And who does he urge his acolytes to worship? God the Father. It's a bit one-sided, right? Because there's more to the Father than the state. That's the thing. And that's the problem with nationalism and its totalitarian variants. And we're moving in that direction fast, right? You see Europe right now fragmenting again because the European Union is too amorphous and maybe not well enough bordered. And everyone is getting nervous. And they're saying, back to the state, back to the state. Hitler, these men and women knew but a single yearning, back to the Reich. It's fair enough, fair enough. You need to be around people who are like you, so to speak, that you have built a consensus with. Yes, you need to be around people who are like you, whose culture is a mighty oak. You perch on one of its branches and must defend it from racial corruption. Once more, Peterson loves showing the standard bearer because Hitler is his knight in shining armor. Here are two more statements Peterson has made about the propaganda picture. Peterson, but that's Hitler as knight of the blood, roughly speaking. Knight of the blood. He means pure Aryan blood. I like these pictures of Hitler quite a bit. So there's Hitler as, you know, knight of the faith. Hitler, in earlier times, German knights set out for distant lands in order to fight for the ideals of their faith. When Peterson talks about faith, he doesn't mean Christian faith. He means faith in national socialism. In my book, I've got a whole section on him copying Hitler using the word faith. Also, Peterson likes these pictures of Hitler quite a bit. Who would say that? Imagine taking a history class at a supposedly prestigious university and the professor saying, you know, I really like these pictures of Hitler. Doesn't he look dashing? In The Standard Bearer and Es Liebe Deutschland, Hitler is portrayed as heroic. And Peterson has boasted about Hitler to his students, saying, Hitler won a medal for heroism. Peterson calls himself a hero and encourages his followers to be heroes who explore and slay the dragon. Here's a Nazi propaganda poster of a soldier slaying the Bolshevik dragon. Note the Star of David hanging from the beast's neck. Keeping with the theme of the standard bearer, be aware that in an interview with Christina Hoff Summers and Daniel Crittenden, Jordan Peterson referred to his wife Tammy as, quote, a fairly harsh standard bearer, end quote. Why would a professor who shows and raves about a propaganda portrait of Hitler called the standard bearer describe his wife as a fairly harsh standard bearer? The answer may be found in Mein Kampf, where Hitler writes of standard bearers of the Aryan race nine times, usually hyphenating the term. Hitler, whenever Aryans have mingled their blood with that of an inferior race, the result has been the downfall of the people who were the standard bearers of a higher culture. Peterson, when the rite is successfully completed, the initiated are no longer children, dependent upon their mothers, but are dependent upon the tribe of men, active standard bearers of their particular culture. Again, Hitler says, standard bearers of a higher culture, and Peterson says, standard bearers of their particular culture. Jordan Peterson routinely implies that one day his career will come to a shuddering halt, that he will say something which will bring everything to an abrupt end, that the cultural Marxists, who are pathological and reprehensible, will discover the quote-unquote smoking pistol, that one day he will look out his window to find an angry mob. Why would he say that? Isn't it a bit strange? What the media has dubbed the Jordan Peterson phenomenon is in fact a massive, mainstream, online, neo-Nazi cult. And the smoking pistol is the devil in his due how Jordan Peterson plagiarizes Adolf Hitler. Thank you for listening and viewing. Feel free to hit like and subscribe.